Issue 3, this one has more of the teams that are scattered across time, and the main scene takes place in World War II, where, surprisingly enough, they incorporate Easy Company. Now, this is long before even the book Band of Brothers came out that the miniseries was based on, so I'm not sure quite how well-known Easy Company was, but now that they are this big, famous thing from the war that are like known as the big elites of the whole American military in there, pretty much. It is kind of interesting to see how they were portrayed back then, which is honestly not so good. We get none of their names, and they're mostly just cannon fodder. So it comes across as... Like, I imagine what they were trying to do was portray just how big the threat of these, like, shadow monsters are that someone like Easy Company can be taken out like this. But it, it honestly comes across as really uh, disrespectful to them, and uh, it's not a big part of the story, so I guess I can let it go, but it, it just does kind of uh, leave a bad taste for the rest of this kind of just in the back of my mind, and it's just a sign of um, how um, people didn't think of uh, the real uh, reaction that they would have to deal with across all of fandom before the internet was around, because there's no way you could do something like this today. And also in this issue, we have stuff like uh, the Earth-3 Lex Luthor's son, who is aging rapidly, and there's something about like matter and antimatter in him. I couldn't really follow that. I'm sure it's completely made-up science, so there's not much point in trying to follow it, and it doesn't make sense anyway. But uh, you know, he's clearly being set up to be important later, so I'm fine with just uh, him just being around for now. Um, the whole accelerated aging thing is kind of a neat thing, even if it does remind me a bit much of uh, Marcus from Avengers 200, like I brought up before. Um, we also have uh, Brainiac and the Legion of Superheroes in the future, who I, of course, am aware of from their roles on Supergirl. And it's neat to see uh, just where those came from, because I mostly just knew Brainiac from the Superman cartoon in the 90s. Um, so... I liked him in that one, and the Supergirl version is pretty good, and it's I just basically get to see what we missed when they had to completely redo Season 3 and not show the rest of the Legion anymore. But, you know, the Legion of Superheroes, they serve their purpose. They battle this antimatter wave. They get wiped, some of them at least get wiped out, and... Speaking of that, we also have a scene in the Old West with a bunch of the Old West characters going through all of DC, and I kind of get the feeling like they didn't really cross paths that much because it's not that kind of story like a superhero story is. Like, you read a Western comic, you just want this one lone gunslinger type hero. But, you know, we get them all together here. The only one I'm familiar with is Jonah Hex from Legends of Tomorrow and that one crappy movie that he was in a while ago with Thanos. But uh, we don't get much established for any of them. They're just basically generic cowboys. Uh, so I'm hoping there is a bit more to come with that because uh, most of them are still alive at this point. So there's time. And um, uh, there is some potential there to see, like, what are the differences between these people? How are they going to work together? But uh, there is so much still to get done here that uh, if they don't go back to that, I'm fine either way, really. Like, that's kind of the big advantage of telling a story this big. You always have something better to cut away to if uh, what you're doing right now is not that great. And um, one more thing in this issue, we have the ending uh, with a big cliffhanger as Harbinger fully turns against the Monitor. She reveals her true self to uh, him, at least her one personality is turning against him, and I still have no idea what's up with that, where any of this is going, but it's a decent cliffhanger, and like we have the Monitor, uh, very weak for some reason, and like even he doesn't know, so that's a good mystery. And so he's just making this one last-ditch attempt to save all of reality, but now his big soldier has turned against him. And how does he deal with that? We'll just find out next time. And I will see you there, because I'm still really loving this thing, and um, I'm eager to see where it goes from here.